So what's going on YouTube? I am standing inside of a 2018 Forest River Sandpiper 383 RVLOK. If I said that wrong, I'll put it in the comments for you. But I wanted to show this RV to you because when my wife and I were looking at RV, Sandpiper was actually one that was on the list. Now I will tell you, this RV is very large. So if you are looking to tow something like this, you will definitely have to have a one ton truck. The gross vehicle weight of this RV is going to be 15.5. And I think it has a uh, unloaded weight of about 13 and some change. I, I'll, I'll make sure I put that in the comments too. But one thing I love about this RV is that it has a ton of space. I mean, as you can see, I'm standing inside the living room. And as you can see, you have your television right here. You have a really nice kitchen with an island. And then this will be your one of your couches that you have. It's your one and only couch. And what I love about RVs like this is they give you space to put other things. So you, if you want to, you can put your coffee pot over here. And they also give you a lot of space over, over on this side to put things on the countertop too. This is probably one of the biggest things I will say about RVing that's important to us is having counter space. Our fifth wheel does have enough for what we have, but of course we would love to have more. So let's get started in this back bunk. This is a big bunk house. I mean, you if you have a large family, you definitely need to take a look at this RV. I'm gonna close the door. Some of the space that you have inside of this RV. If you are a pack rat, I tell you, this is the RV for you. Let me show you. I mean, look at all of this store space inside this fifth wheel. They give you nice little drawers with a little soft clothes. Same for the bottom there. And they also give you some storage below where your television will be. And it looks like you can put a sound bar in here too. The kids want to play some video games, things like that. And they can put their game console there. And again, you still have more storage, high storage, if you need to add things. Now this bottom one below here, this is probably would be good if you have if you want to add like a coat rack or like a like a rod to hang stuff. And of course you can put your, your shoes on the bottom there. So you have a very tall ladder. Pull it up for you. And you have extra places for sleeping. So I'm gonna climb up here. You have a window, a nice little cubby on that side, and it turns into it, it stops right here and it turns into an L. And as you can see, you have another little cubby on this side. And you can put more kids over here to sleep. <clears throat> and on top of that, you have yet more sleeping on this slide on this side too. And they give you a nice window there. And then you have a little futon on the bottom. They give you some pa some power outlets on the bottom and the USB. So the kids want to charge their iPads while they're playing on them. They could do that. Now this is a hide -a bed I believe this is an option. So if the kids are just hanging out in the room, they can put this up. And I I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. And so as you can see there, that you have two little latches, one on this side, and then there's going to be another one on that side. So that way you can have that up while the kids hang out on the futon. This futon does turn into a bed also. I'm not going to show that to you because it's going to take me too long to figure it out. I'm not a smart person. Let's put this ladder up. Now one thing I did not mention to you is that this fifth wheel does have two bathrooms. So let's walk into this very small bathroom in the rear. You do have a, you do have a porcelain toilet and you do have a bath and a shower head too. So if you have small kids, this is a perfect area to take, give them baths. And they do give you a exit back here too. If you have small kids, I'm not sure how I would feel about having this door, but I'm pretty sure if you were to deadlock it, they probably would not be able to get out. But that would be a little concern for you. My kids are under the age of five. And they do give you a nice little sink with storage below it. And they do give you a medicine cabinet up top. I would like to point out that this is a very small sink too. My hand is almost bigger than that and they do give you a little fan above the shower which is good for like any type of condensation so <clears throat> i'm gonna walk out of the bathroom back into the bunkhouse and as i mentioned let's go ahead and take a look inside the kitchen again so this will be your your dining booth for this fifth row there is a dinette optional for this rv most people would recommend to have this because this does give you extra storage and it does turn into a bed if you need more sleeping area. Honestly, in this fifth wheel, with the fifth wheel of the size 
I probably would just recommend just getting the dinette, but hey, that's just my opinion. And as you can see in the kitchen, they do they did opt us to have a residential style refrigerator. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of just doing the gas electric. There's more things that you can do with the gas electric refrigerator. And just do your own research just to figure out what would be best for you. And this is gonna be your kitchen sink. It is on the kitchen island. I will say there's not a lot of space up here, but there's two, there's two spots for your sink to wash. And if you need more counter space, they do give you you know those uh, these toppers up top there. I'm not sure what they call them. They do give you a residential size microwave, and this is going to be an LG product. In the in the refrigerator, it's also going to be LG. Now your cooktop is going to be a Furion. This is pretty much the standard cooktop I've seen in most RVs. You're going to have three burners, and they also give you a very small little oven below with a light inside of there. I was told that a lot of people think that you can cook on top of this glass. So if you don't, if your salesperson doesn't tell you, do not cook on top of this glass. You have to open this up. Not gonna say that we've never done it before, but I've heard that people have. All right, so let's let's go ahead and walk in. So again, I'm back in the living room area too. As you see, there's a, it's not a 50 inch TV. It looks like a 40 inch television right there. And as I mentioned before, you have a lot of counter space inside of this living room and inside the kitchen. So be sure if you don't have that on your list, make sure that you look at things like that because once you get your RV, a lot of people don't think that they need it, but you definitely would like to have that counter space inside your fifth wheel. So as we leave the living room, we would walk up these stairs to go to the bathroom, which is the, sec the, the second bathroom and the bedroom. But before we do that, this is one of the entrances for this RV. So you have one, at the pretty much in the mid part of the fifth wheel and there's one in the rear now i would like to point out one thing about i've noticed on forest river products is that their trim pieces do come apart very easily i mean i see this a lot on forest river products so the only thing i want to say is if you see that don't be alarmed it just these things are going to these things are going to happen on rvs our fifth wheel i can tell you has not had not one trim piece come undone we've gone on a three thousand mile trip in our keystone cougar and everything has worked pretty much flawlessly. We've had issues with it, but for the most part, it's been a really good RV. I would like to point out that this RV does have a central vacuum cleaner. If you are building an RV, you better make sure if this is an option, you put it on your, your fifth wheel. The reason why I say that, it's better to have it built in than to have to carry around, a, 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 even if it is a small vacuum cleaner, but to have to carry one and store one. It's just, for my, in my opinion, it's just better to have this built in because it's actually a really easy system. Some, some RVs actually will give you like places that you can sweep, you know, sweep stuff up and put it into the central vacuum cleaner. I don't see that this one has that, but I highly recommend that if you do plan on building an RV and it's, there's an option for that, definitely add that to your list. So one thing I want to point out is this bathroom door is kind of cumbersome. You can't open it all the way like this, but you will have to keep that door closed for the most part. So we're in the bathroom right now. As you can see, you have a porcelain toilet up front and they give you these really nice glass doors for your shower. And take a look at Forest River putting these really nice shower heads and everything in the bathroom. Nice little spot for some bar soap. And this is a two-piece shower too. Normally on the higher luxury models, you'll see like a one-piece. But they do give you seat in back there. And they give you storage uh, above the toilet and a little rack for your for your towels. More stores to the left to the right of the shower head. And again, more stores. Now there is no medicine cabinet storage, but they do give you some more storage below the sink. I've said storage a lot so far, so I'm going to use another word after this. They give you an outlet inside of the bathroom too. And again, you have another fan. Actually, they give you a fantastic fan actually back here. And take a look at this uh, of the counter space inside of the bathroom. This is another part in our bathroom that I wish we had more of. We don't have a lot of counter space. And this is a huge thing for us, having counter space in the bathroom so you can put your toothbrushes, your lotion, all that crap, and not have to open up a, a, you know, any type of place to get it. 
you don't have the open door to get it. So, just my opinion. All right, they do give you a skylight too for the bathroom. Now, moving to the front of the fifth wheel, they give you a really nice. Uh, this is a this is probably the average size of a of a bedroom. This is a queen bed, I can tell, but I believe there is a king bed option for this fifth wheel. I'm gonna close the door here. As you can see, they do give you some wall storage to the to the left of the bed. If you look at if you're looking at the bed, they give you some storage to the left, and they also give you a little, little like a little dresser that has some drawers. You can, you can add stuff there, and they do have wash and dryer connections in this fifth wall. I really like these sliding doors. They look really nice. Let's do this. That's what it looks like with the doors closed. And this is a 15K AC unit too, which is optional on this fifth wheel. I really like the fact that they put two 15K uh, AC units in this fifth wheel because this is a very large RV and you really want to have as much you know AC and something this size because in the summertime it will get hot in here but look at this look at the sizes of this of this closet I mean you can you can store a lot of stuff in here and they give you little cubbies in the back too I don't see any power out outlets back here but again for the most part well, there, there's some right there excuse me there are two I believe that's two of them right there yep there's two power outlets but that's going to be for your washer and dryer but they don't have any USBs in here and they do have one power outlet on this side and one on that side actually. And then here's your storage below the bed. But really that's pretty much it. This is a really nice fifth wheel for a large family. Even if you don't have a large family, like having that bunk room, you can store a lot of stuff back there. If you do have grandkids that will come and visit you, this would be a good fifth wheel for that because you still have a nice size living area. And, and this is a big coach. I mean, 42 foot long. It has a, it has a 127 gallon green water tank. I'm gonna say tanks plurally because I'm pretty sure there's one in the front, one in the back. And I'm pretty sure it has two dump stations for black water tank too. So keep that in mind too. So here's the front of the uh, Sandpiper. Sorry that it's snowing. Like I said, it's, what I'll do is I'll show you another picture of the front cap to give you a better idea of what it looks like. Okay, this is going to be your standard pin box. You do have an upgraded pin box you can purchase if you do order your fifth wheel. And this is going to be a 15.5 pin box too. There you go. And up front, you do have two propane tanks just below the pin box too. I actually like that design better than having one on each side. And here's your storage area in the front under the pin box too now we'll say if you know this fifth wall is optional for, with a generator prep package i strongly recommend if you even if you don't plan on using it get a generator prep package for your fifth well i think for the most part if you don't have one if you plan on selling it in the future it'll be in my opinion i would pay more for a fifth wheel that has a generator prep package so i strongly recommend you get that this fifth wheel also is optional with a six point uh leveling system it is hydraulic i'm gonna show you how i know that normally when you see this up front you know that this is going to be a hydraulic system and i believe these are wide stance legs too and up front you can see that this does have a drop frame which is going to give you a larger storage bay but look how tall the storage bay area is they do give you light out here too and that's your uh, power shut off on the other side there take a look at this aluminum structure too I don't know what happened here but as you can see some of the aluminum some of this astro foils kind of coming up make sure you do a good thorough walk around of your fifth wheel before you take delivery of it have them fix all that little stuff like that and this is actually a pretty thick door too See, you do have two outdoor speakers this is a 15 foot awning on the entry door side they give you four steps for the entry door this is going to be your 6.11 system you're going to have three on this side and then three on the other side so this one is right in the middle of the coach of course you have one up front 
And then you have one just behind the uh, the rear wheels of the coach. They do give you upgraded suspension on this fifth wheel. And they're using, I'm not sure what kind of tires these are, but Castle Rock tires. One notable thing to point out is they do give you aluminum steps back here too. There's going to be four steps back here. This fifth wheel does have an outside kitchen with a sink. So if you plan on grilling, they give you an outside mic, they give you a microwave out here. More storage as always. And they give you four little lights up top there. And they give you a small little refrigerator. So I want to do a quick voiceover. This is kind of noisy in the back. So this will be LED brake lights on the rear of the fifth wheel. They did give you an outside grill mounted to the rear bumper. However, there is no hitch on the back of this fifth wheel. This was pre-wired for a camera. Up top, all the lights up there and the ones on the side will be incandescent bulbs. So you, you can add LEDs after the fact, but you would have incandescent. Next, I'm going to show you guys below the slide. You do have one of your uh, holding tank uh, dumps. And if you see, this slide that is under is going to be rack and pinion. And the one next to it also is rack and pinion too. Next, I'm going to show you how you can empty those tanks. You're going to have three. One for the kitchen and two for the bathroom. And they give you this little entryway to, to, get, to slide your hand through to pull them. So you don't have to climb under the fifth wheel. Probably have to have small hands to be, to be completely honest with you. And you can see that rack and pinion on that slide too. Next, I'm going to show you guys where the other dumping area would be at for the gray and the black tank. So, if you do buy this fifth wheel, you will need two sewer hoses. So, keep that in mind since you have two bathrooms. These are other side of the storage bay. This is the driver's side. Here you have your your heater, and they give you your your 50 amp power. And this is going to be your hot water heater. And more than likely, this is going to be a Dometic. As you can see, they do give you a water filter, and they do give you a light inside of here LED. Not every light on this coach is LED. But there are a lot of, of LEDs on this fifth wheel. As you can see, they give you a pass through for your water. It doesn't, it doesn't screw in there, it just drops in. You have two valves up front. And as you saw, you had, I believe you had three valves in the rear. One's probably gonna be for the kitchen and two are gonna be for the bathroom, for the black tank and for the gray water tank back there. You do have two black tank flushes because you do have a black tank up front and then one in the rear. And outside shower, city water fill, and if you need to fill your fresh water, you can fill it actually with the water holes, which is really nice. And then this is your hot water heater bypass for the winter time. And then this is the other side. So you do have a, a auto leveling system with this coach. And if you need to turn off, if you need to kill the power for the fifth wheel, if you're not using it, you can just turn this key. Uh oh, there you go. You have to push, you have to push it in and then turn it if you want power and then you can, you can kill the power that way. I would do, if this was my fifth wheel, in the future I would probably take this this spare tire and put it below the fifth wheel. I, this is a this is a very large storage compartment so you have more than enough space in here to leave it in here. And then this gives you the directions for the auto leveling system. And up here, this is the inverter. And 
notice below here you would put your batteries if you would like to do a battery bank you would have to probably relocate this because there's not enough space this is probably just a space for just one battery and as you see they can put a little bit you can see the insulation too that they put inside of these doors just to give you a comparison like this look how thin this door is compared to that it's very thick and it's kind of heavy too actually it's a nice little a, a good bit of weight to it but that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching the video and like i said if you haven't had a chance please take a moment and subscribe to the channel one last thing i did not point out is this does have a straight roof all the way back it does not curve down and that's going to be because you do have that bathroom in the rear to give you more headroom too you have three slides on this side one on this side so you have this is a four slide fifth wheel and as i mentioned this is a long fifth wheel so if you are in the market or something like this be, be sure that you you know you plan on probably using a one ton for something like this if you want to stay legal and let's go ahead and go over the numbers of this fifth wall and then i'll show you guys the advertised weight for this fifth wall also taking a look at the specification on this specific fifth wheel uh to the right of that floor plan you're gonna have a hitch weight of 2184 pounds it's kind of expecting it to be about 25 2600 pounds for a dry hitch weight but that, that's actually really good for a fifth wheel this size gross vehicle weight range could be 15,500 pounds if you take that 15.5 gvwr and you multiply it by 23 percent assuming that that to be your pin weight you'll come in at 3,565 pounds uh, so once you start adding your all your propane you start filling the tanks up you start adding all your all your gear and maybe adding a generator even a washer and dryer you probably would get to that that pin weight very quickly. Unloaded vehicle weight is going to be 13,469 pounds. Your CCC is going to be your cargo carrying capacity. It's going to come in at 2,031 pounds. Exterior length 42 foot and 2 inches. Exterior height 13 foot and 2 inches. And your exterior width is going to be 96 inches. This is probably in line with a mid profile fifth wheel. That's probably, that's probably what I would consider this to be a mid profile. Freshwater tanks would be 60 gallons. And if you plan on doing some boondocking, that's probably a good size freshwater tank. Ideally, you would want 80 plus. That'll probably give you a good week if you're not showering every day. Gray water tank's gonna give you 127 gallons. Black water's gonna give you 82 gallons. You could assume that's gonna be two tanks per. So you probably have to divide that down the middle. So, and the reason why I say this is because you have two dump stations for the fifth wheel to dump on the outside. So that's where I'm getting that, that from. So let's take a look at this fifth wheel that we just look at to see what the numbers are on it. So anytime you look at any fifth wheels, the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is look for this sticker to see what the ratings are on the fifth wheel. That's actually something I did not do when I started looking at RVs. I never really paid attention to, the, to this information. So I'm gonna show you some information to look for on these stickers. In the top left corner, you're gonna see this information. It's gonna show you the manufacturer, the date it was built, and one thing I want to point out is going to be those axles. You're going to have two 7,000 pound axles on this fifth wheel. They're assuming that 1,500 pounds of that weight is going to be on the pin box. Of course, there's going to be more than that on the pin box, but that's why they don't give you 8,000 pound uh, axles for the fifth wheel to, to take care of the entire weight of the fifth wheel. So this is one thing I would recommend you look at. It shows you your tire sizes up there. And it also is going to show you the the cold inflation pressure for the tires. If you're paying attention, you would have noticed that this is showing you the cargo carrying capacity at 2,170 pounds. Now, I've never really seen this before. This fifth wheel does have some options, but for the most part, the cargo carrying capacity went up. I've never seen that before, but this fifth wheel actually has a higher cargo carrying capacity than when it shows online. And lastly, this last sticker is just showing you the car, how they get to the cargo carrying capacity. It's basically determined with a fresh water tank filled up with the water and your waste tank's empty. And then it shows you what a mass of waste water tank would, would weigh. So just keep that in mind. So if you do boondock, you know, when you are driving, make sure you understand that that extra weight from the wastewater is gonna weigh some weight there. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't had a chance yet, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you can see when the next video comes up. Uh, playing on doing more videos like this in the future. 
Um, if you have a second to also make, be sure to put a comment in, in the comment section too. Thank you guys for watching.